how are you? <laughs> Good, thanks. Yeah, how's your, so far it's Wicked Wednesday today. It how, was freezing. Oh, tell you. Like, yeah, I don't and, deal with the cold. No, it's, it's in Joburg it's freezing. I don't know what PE is doing. Um, we're Lauren, and we, yeah, we've got an amazing guest tonight. So happy to have her here. Um, Lauren Hose, welcome to Talking Sirens. Hey, Lauren. <laughs> it's so nice to have you joining us this evening. Thank we've been looking much. forward to this. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, yeah, we, we obviously want to ask you, you've got such talent when it comes to graphic design. We've seen your products, we've seen how you've designed um, streaming, we've seen your logos. Um, tell us a bit more about what you basically do on a day-to-day, -day, like what goes through your mind in creating something like a product or one of the projects you're working on. Okay, well, I have 12 clients, my everyday retainer clients. So mm -hmm. essentially what that means is every day I have to wake up and we have to touch base and I have to see what they want. Um, whether it is print material, whether it is digital material, an advert, a video, whatever, and then we do that. So, and then in addition to that, I have external clients that mm -hmm. I don't maybe see every day or every week, even maybe once or twice a month, that will then book stuff in. So that's um, that's how my day works. Mm -hmm. okay. And you do what? What sort of uh, graphic designs do you do? Um. Majority of the stuff that I do is social media designs. Um, so I've got, I'm fortunate enough to have clients in pretty much every industry, pretty much every industry, from weddings to real estate to security to um, safaris to um, accommodation. I can't now for the life of me like recall everything, but. I have quite a number of uh, jewelry. I've got everything. So hmm. sometimes just um, new product releases, specials. I don't know. Um, especially with lockdown, a lot of businesses that I've worked with had to change their approach right. on their business model to adapt because, for example, the weddings couldn't happen so because of the gathering yeah. ban. So they had to adapt to have their venue used for other things. And now recently they've started doing drive-through farmer's markets, which are a major success. Wow. So it's actually wow. very exciting that as their businesses adapt, so does the needs that they have from me adapt. And it's actually awesome because it, it, it can get stale. If you're doing mm. the same thing every mm. day, it can get stale. Um, so I really enjoy it when, when the dynamics change a little bit. Okay, brilliant. I'm sure. What's What's been your biggest lesson with the with this lockdown? Like, how have you, in your own thinking and productivity, have you decided? Because I see we're getting a lot of emails at work, um, saying like join a Zoom meeting, and then it's very plain. It's like plain script, and I'm thinking you've got to be eye catching. You've got to grab people. So, have you? Um, for me, from my business perspective, or or creatively. Other or, yeah, what major recommendations have you sort of said, look, I think you should do this? Do you find you, you recommend more things or do you think clients have an idea of what they want? Um, it depends. It depends on the client. Some clients, the relationship I have with them is more open. So if it's, I think if I look at it and I say, that's not going to work, then they'll, they'll take it. And we'll, we'll come to an agreement as to what might work rather in, in that mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, even if I know it's stupid, I'll just put my head down and do it because <laughs> there is no room to there's no room to like say I don't I'm not going to be your client for this thing. Right? Yeah. I don't. I'm not yeah. going to buy into this. But it's cool. There might be somebody that would. Um, majority of the clients that I have. If if I um and ah or 
ask them to repeat what they just said, they might question, they might say, oh, is that a bad idea? Or maybe the artwork side that they have in mind doesn't match what they want to do. It, there's, it's a number of things. Um, I can't actually remember the question. Well, I have a question for you, Lauren. So what made you just... Okay. What made you decide to get into graphic designing? Was it a passion that you've always had? Did you grow up always wanting to do it? Or how did you get into it? No, I actually originally wanted to study um, journalism initially. And then um, I don't know why I didn't in the end. I don't think generally South Africa at the time, I mean, we're talking 2000, 2001, didn't I mean there was a market for journalism, but it wasn't a big thing. It wasn't mm. a major thing. You, you, I didn't know anybody that studied it. It was one of those subjects that were considered maybe something you were taking a risk at. So it had to be. I had to study something that was in the creative field in some way, and I actually ended up studying web design. And through web design, you have to learn graphic design. Well, mm. you touch on it, but Back then, everything was slightly uh, was completely different. You literally you had Photoshop and Corel Draw, and that those were your options. Now the design space is so big. Everything else that I've learned, I've had to teach myself through the years because they they never existed. They didn't exist. So it's just something you either enjoy it or you hate it, or you're somebody who's creative, but maybe your your you think graphic design is your is your thing, but maybe art is your thing, not so much graphic design. Mm -hmm. So um, I often get someone will say, "Oh, my niece or my whatever is so creative, and she loves to draw and stuff. She wants to go and study graphic design." It's not the same thing. It's not what the, what. The, the clients see you as they're not seeing you as somebody who's drawing some clients will send yeah. you a word document and say make this pretty and it's the bane of my existence i hate microsoft i don't i hate designing in microsoft even powerpoint i hate it but you have to do it and that's not it's not art it's just being able to structure stuff that's easy to read and um, keep someone's attention and using colors and fonts and just presenting something to somebody in the most basic of ways, but still keeps their, their focus on whatever you're presenting to them. That's what it essentially is. So, yeah. So it's a wow, but just makes it more interesting what, what people are reading. Ooh, you know, I, of, I mean, if you look at Sorry, sorry. Sorry. It's very delayed. So when you start talking, I don't realize it. Um, sorry. No, it's fine. Um, basically, for me, I think graphic design, as a graphic designer, it means something different to every graphic designer. So I'm just speaking about what my client base expects from me. So. Okay. What's your business called, Lauren? Um, I work under Lightbulb Media. So all myself, I have, I've, I've got a split... I've got clients that come directly to Lauren Coast, and then I've got clients that come to Lightbulb Media. So it depends on which avenue, how you reached me. Um, basically, and I, and I don't mean this in a nasty way of, of saying it, but most of the time, PE is pretty small. So 90% of the time, I actually know the people that I'm dealing with, which is very nice. Um, I prefer to, to know someone even a little bit just to get a feel for what kind of person they are, how they deal with things. You, you, I almost work on a referral system only, if that makes okay. sense. Like, I, if I know you or I know somebody that actually knows you, then I will work with you. I often, often, more often than not, don't take on strangers. All right. Yeah, it's how I get it. That sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's actually a lot easier to to work with people that you know because if you know what they like you kind of get an idea of of what to do in their design because then you know okay well look this person is more of a chic 
um, modernized type of person, so they want a more chic, modernized kind of look. Or if they're more into vintage, then you know, okay, look, they want a more vintage or a more pretty or a more dull kind of look. You know, so it is a lot easier working with people that that you know. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Laura, so do you want how to many give... years? Mm. Sorry, sorry. I just want to know if you want to give a shout out to anyone uh, on the the chats for a second. Sure, we can have a look. Okay, let's see who's there. Sure, we got quite a few people here tonight. We have got our usual our usual guests, which is a style yes. and gentle inflatables. And, and, and I see Scott. And the Scott's new. Yeah. Okay. And Bob here. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, lovely. Oh, fantastic. We got Take Five, Willem Bicklesby's. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. I think I did see a question here. Mel S. says, Lauren Chaos, creativity in any form is art if you're as good as if you as good at, at it as you are. Wait, read that again. Yes. Uh, yeah, creativity <laughs> is in any form if you're as good as it is. Good if you are as good as it is. By the way, people, like our stream and subscribe if you haven't. And also, Lauren's channel is brilliant. Um, Laura and I, it's kind of weird. Lauren and Laura, excellent. Okay, always want to. <laughs> um, and the only difference between our names is after Lauren's R, mine's just an A. <laughs> yeah. Because Lauren's got the Y, double N, E. Yeah. So actually about two weeks ago I watched your um your videos that you put on. I think they were brilliantly done. I loved how you did the, the sort of nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties graphic with the with the waves going through the video and made it look very sort of retro. Um I, I dug that a lot. So if people if you haven't watched the videos, check them out. Um yeah, if you want to carry on talking about your graphic design, we can, and then maybe we'll dive, delve into a little bit of conspiracy theory stuff. Sure. I, I just want to say, Ronaldo put a comment here, Lauren. He says she doesn't take on strangers. That's not what she told me that night we met. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, he's such a troll. Ignore him. <laughs> okay, we'll ignore him. We'll ignore him. <laughs> um, what's been your greatest project? Do you, do you, do you gravitate more to uh, obviously weddings? Do you, what's your, is it? What do you prefer to do? Um, what you're asking I, pref Sorry. Mm. I prefer to start something from scratch um, in that I don't like to be, look, I love doing weddings, but weddings is almost like a holiday for me. So doing the stationery for any wedding or whatever, bridal shower, baby shower, whatever, it's it's like just a break for me because I get to just, there's no rules. So I can just do whatever oh, wow. I want. But when you're on a corporate identity and you have to follow a brand, it's a little bit different. So a lot of the companies that I deal with are already established. They were established before they came to me. Um, mm -hmm. So I have to follow whatever the initial rule was for their corporate identity. Whereas sometimes do allow me to take, to, over the years I've subtly developed their, or changed their brand to allow for, for different fonts or whatever I felt was necessary. Um, but my favorite is to start from scratch, whether it be an event, whether it be a campaign, whether it be just from logo, from choosing the colors that you're gonna you're going to go with to the font to to your logo to your just branding it's my favorite thing to do it's my favorite now have, have you ever received a project that you were like like for example if it was somebody else's project and they didn't like what the person was doing so they handed it over to you and you were like no like i don't want to do this <laughs> look if there's if any graphic designer will feel that will know what i'm talking about when somebody hands over someone else's rubbish to you. Um, because let's say that person was charging 350 and you're charging 3,500 Rand. So they went to that person for 350 and discovered they're not getting what they wanted. So they'll mm -hmm. come to you for 3,500 Rand. But now they don't want you to start from scratch. They want you to build on that rubbish 
that they got for three fifty. So in those instances, you now charge six six thousand because you have to now fix. It's like a hairdresser. If you go to the hairdresser yeah. with box dye, they're going to charge you more than if you go there and they're working on natural hair. I don't know. Reese might be in the comments. She might be able to comment on that. Um, <laughs> but that's my opinion. Uh -huh. on the but that, that uh, must be your. I don't hate it though. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. Um, especially if the logo comes from a time when bevel and embossing was like the thing and <laughs> drop shadows were huge and it was almost three dimensional. I don't know if you remember, there was a time when people were designing logos in, in like word and they were using word art, you know, that, that section that you can click like arts and then it makes your font all fancy. They were using that as yeah. logo and then they'll give me that logo and I have to create something for them. I refuse. I often don't even respond to those people. I don't even reply. Okay. I can't deal with it. Yeah, yeah. But this lucky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I talk a lot. I talk a lot. That's fine. Brilliant. Keep talking. Keep talking. Brilliant. Brilliant. There's a lovely streaming. We got three lovely ladies on here tonight. Although Lauren outshines us by, by like a lot, yeah. but at least okay. uh, three lovely ladies tonight. <laughs> That's gorgeous. I love your, yeah. your earpods. I bought some earpods. Uh, I don't know what those are, but the ones I bought at your local big uh, shop were um, not so great. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I took them back. These are an older secondhand ones. The ones oh, yeah. he gave me when he upgraded. Okay. So I'm not. not a technology <laughs> snob like he is, so I'm okay <laughs> with it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Yanni, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, Laura. Mm -hmm. No, no, no problem. It's, but there was silence for a couple of seconds, so that I'll just fill the gap. <laughs> um, Yanni van der Volt says, "Oh wow, at Lauren, the first time I hear someone understand that you can't fix box star, ladies. This is the ban, ban, eh? ban of Reese van der Volt's existence." <laughs> It's true. I don't know what word that is. It is. I'll tell you what, I had worse. Like, I had my hair dyed red because I'm, I'm actually naturally red, but I had my hair dyed um, like a dark, 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 like maroon red. And then I had my hair dyed black. And the black had like grown out to about here because now I decided, no, I don't like the black anymore. I went to a hairdresser and I'm like, listen, fix this. And she just kind of gave me this look. Like an OMG look, like really. <laughs> I said, so well, I want to go blonde. I don't like this anymore. I've had enough. <laughs> so yeah, well, blonde, I got, I got blonde is the hardest hair to maintain, but it's also the easiest hair to maintain because you can pretty you have more freedom if you're blonde. So if you decide to, I, I mean, with hair color, uh, yeah. If you decide. <laughs> <laughs> to, to change it up, go a little bit brown, a little bit, what do you call it, low light, high light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also, silver, yeah. silver. The, yeah, only problem, the only problem is if your hair's not naturally blonde and you have lock done. You have what? That? Then, and then you have lock down. Because then you can't, like when your hair grows out, like you can see mine's growing up. Yeah, you can't mine. go to a hairdresser to go get it redone. It's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then when your hair's tied up, it looks like your hair's dark. Meanwhile, it's not. It's actually blonde. <laughs> no, this lockdown has been terrible. <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't often visit the hairdresser. Not as much as I probably should. I tend to push my hair as far as I can. Um, mm -hmm. Because my hair takes so long. I've been told that I have like two strands per, um, what do you call it? Per ratio, per, per follicle. Uh, and I've been told, uh, yes, follicle, that's it. So I've been told that my hair is very hard, very, takes color very easily, but it takes long. I don't know why. So uh, I have like four hours, I can't do it. My hair will grow like wildfire. Like this is, the, this new dark that you can see, that's wow. literally like a month. Two weeks. Not even, two yeah, weeks. Not, not even, yeah. Two weeks. My hair in, in three months, I mean, this is like three months from here to here. 
Sure. My hair, my hair and my nails, they grow. I'm so maintaining my hair. Thank goodness I'm a nail technician so I can do it myself. Otherwise, I'd get a nail technician every two weeks because <laughs> my hair and my nails just don't stop. They're like, <laughs> they're um, like crazy. So I think I put on my brill now. Now I'm going to look all clever, you see? Now I want to look all clever, ah. madam. So I want to delve into your videos okay if you don't mind if that's okay okay so your your week in april what made i remember i think you were you were chatting with your husband and you you said you thought of what made you come up with the idea of delving into april is has it something you'd heard or yes i listen to podcasts a lot um i only have well i can either only listen to music or podcasts I can't really watch something while working. So, because I only have my desktop computer. So, I listen to a lot of podcasts and I tend to listen and I gravitate towards conspiracy theories or um, a different opinion podcasts. So, podcasts that, that tell or talk about things that maybe you don't necessarily hear in mainstream media and so forth. And there's one, it's one of my favorites. It's actually. Um, theories oh, of the third kind is my favorite one at the mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. I go through moods, so some days I don't want to hear about them, and then other days I love them. So, um, mm-hmm. but, and I actually heard it. It was in a in a they were having a general talk. I don't know what they call it, theories Thursday or something, and they were just they touched on it briefly, and it caught my interest, and I had to. I still call it rewind because I'm old school, mm-hmm. so I had to rewind. And listen to it again, and that made me go and look it up. It made me go and research the dates and the timeline and see. And I was completely taken aback by the amount of dates or happen happening, the occurrences that happened on those dates. Yeah. And Ronaldo thought it was absolute nonsense, but he does think that for most of the things I say. So until he saw the video, and then he was like. Wow. And I think it's because when I speak, my mind is just, I, I can't actually focus on one thing. So when I realized the topic, I got so excited. So when I tried to explain it, it it probably came out like a jumbled mess. But yeah, yeah I actually heard it on. <laughs> I actually heard hey, it hey. On... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's the gremlins that are stuffing <laughs> That's not that funny. Um, yeah, so exactly into the conspiracy theory of that. Um, but I found something while I was looking, and Laura also found stuff. But so the the week of April, right? So guess which Duis was born in April? Oh, Hitler! Yes. Yes, Mr. Hitler. Yes, I actually I, I didn't. I, for some reason, I didn't see that until after my video was made. And then I saw that. And yeah. then I was like, that, that should have been. But yes, I did actually see that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Laura, was there anything you picked out of that one that you thought was also incredible? Sure. I think a lot of it. I mean, just the facts, just the natural disasters alone. I mean, the three earthquakes. It was like. It's just crazy. But what I wanted to ask Lauren is, is how long did you actually research all of this? Like how long did it take you to get all this information? The researching didn't take me too long in that um, I'm pretty I'm pretty solid when I'm researching anything, whether it's this type of thing or even brand identity or, or history of branding or color research or whatnot. The, that didn't take me very long. It was the the voice over recording and then putting the video the visuals together the visuals took me forever the editing and, the edit- and, and yeah. believe it or not and you can you can this might surprise you but I've actually I'm very I very seldom work in I don't even know what the program is called hang on <laughs> um yeah. I very seldom work in Final Cut Pro that's what I made it with so Viral that's cut again, the, say it again. Viral, Viral cut, cut, cut pro. 
final. Yeah. So I very seldom work in that type of program. And this was the first time because it comes standard with a Mac. Well, most Macs that I know of. Um, so I had to pretty much while I was doing it, I was learning the program. Um, so I, I was very critical on the video in the end because I generally am of my work. Um, but Ronaldo thought it was awesome, so I said, "Okay, we can publish it." So yeah, and, that took and it me is very awesome, long. and it is awesome. Yeah, and I'm so is. glad. That, I'm so glad that you did publish it. I'm really, really glad that you did. But I think that's that's a normal thing for people to be critical over their own work, and I think it's a good thing because it always leaves room for improvement, which I don't. I don't think is a bad thing. Um, I'm always critical of the stuff that I do. Like people say to me, oh, your nails look stunning. And it's like, yeah, but I can see this mistake and I can see this mistake. And I, personally, I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. But, but do you find, even though, you... like, sorry, sorry, sorry Carol. Okay, say, Lauren, oh, no, no, I forgot what I was going to say. Go, Lauren. Lauren. No, I was going to say, do you find that you, you're, you're more critical of something that's for you rather than for someone else? Um, I think I'm more critical, actually, like if I'm doing a client's nails, I think I'm more critical of these um, okay. because I would rather get that client back. I would rather spend that extra time on their nails and be more of a perfectionist on these than, than on mine, if that makes sense. It's just mine, it's a lot more difficult to do because I'm right-handed and I have to do my right-handed money. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it also doesn't help. But um, even when I'm doing a client's makeup or something like that, mine I'll just chuck on whereas a client it has to be absolutely perfect so I think I do over perfection clients more than I would myself if that okay. makes sense hmm. but we're not yet to talk about me that's however the conversation goes yeah. but I wanted to say the reason why I asked yeah. is I find for myself I'm far more critical or I'm indecisive of my own stuff Versus if it's for someone else, I can recognize what appeals to them and so forth and actually supply them. If maybe not, if, like let's say we're starting from scratch. I can usually give three logo concepts to someone and majority of the time they choose the first one. And I don't know why I wasted my time on the other two, but usually, but it's, if I'm creating my own logo, it will take me five weeks. Because I, I cannot, I cannot come to a decision. Whereas with the client, I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should but invest I, in a little black ball. Make <laughs> <Okay>. life <laughs> easier. Yeah, I I, that, I find, I, mm? Sorry, I, I was just going to. I suppose that's kind of the same thing of me not knowing what colors and what what designs to choose on my own nails. It's the same kind of thing, I would say. Like I will be sitting there and I'll be sitting. My nails are ready for the design and the colors, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, and, and I'm also funny, I don't like the same thing over and over and over. Like if I did read last last time, I'm not going to do read again or read the following time. Like <laughs> I'm very weird that way. I, it has to be something new and different every single time I do it. So mm. yeah, I, I get that point of what you're saying. But colors are so, I think colors can say so much. I mean, I think, you know, there's this new thing about, well, I don't know how new it is, probably about three years ago that orange is, clearly the new black that if you want to bold and stand out something everything should be orange or or if it's thought generating it should be orange i don't know if you agree with that or obviously the color wheel and cool and warm colors and you know yeah. um ideas uh, generates it's usually for something that's considered a trend it's considered something that's new that's an idea that's a, that's creative um, fun i would associate those with orange on your on your opening video you've got a picture of a guy um i think our tech guy's got a picture of it i can't make out whether it's ted bundy or he's got this sinister smile and then he's got this charming smile like this come to bed me eyes and then he gives this funny grimace. Oh, I don't know who that is, but he he, he gives me goosebumps. Sure. So I put it in there for effect. So. It's very freaky. I don't know. I, I tried looking the whole day today, trying to find who that is. And it almost looks like Ted Bundy, um, but it's not, I don't think. He looks like a soccer killer. 
No. No, that's like something. Like, that, that it'll murder somebody, but then doesn't actually realize the consciousness of it, like it was, like mm. it's normal. That's well, what like he looks like. I'm sure he is someone. I just yeah. don't know. Um. Yeah. Oh, he gives me the creeps. <laughs> I just see it on your video. <laughs> yeah, no, it is very freaky. It is very freaky. It's like yeah. an evil child that knows, like, like you think mm -hmm. they're good and they smile at you and then they just, like, it's like that horror scene in a movie where the killer's yeah. like, hmm, you know, I've got you now. And then it's like, <laughs> sorry, not, or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's your, um, okay, so what is your, your top three Remember, we asked you in the email, what are your most mind-boggling, mind thought-provoking um, conspiracy theories or murder mysteries? Like, what to you Ooh. is... We haven't even touched on true crime. I love for true crime. Oh, yes, um, yes, yes. Okay, let me... We can, we can, we can extend this to of course you my can. conspiracies and then... Um, true crime, but I, we could talk about South African true crime. Mm -hmm. um, things in history, in South African history, that's happened. Because there's actually, I'm going to talk about. I don't know if anybody knows this channel. There's a, a podcast called True Crime South Africa. Okay. Oh. It's it is incredible, and it's only South African murders or, or crime or serial killers, mostly serial killers actually, um, and it's. I, I discovered it one weekend, and for the entire weekend, I sat listening to it. It, it, it was incredible. Um, it's well done, everything. So if you're interested in, in true crime, and then specifically if you're South African, and you're interested in South African true crime, you really should try out True Crime South Africa. Um, it's, it's very good. So let's do conspiracy theories, and then I'll go into the true crime. Okay. Uh, what did you ask? Where did you I see? <laughs> you don't? Sorry. Wait, Laura. Laura, oh, Laura, no, Laura, Laura quickly. I was going to ask you where did where did you see or hear about the Illuminati Illuminati card games? Oh, that's been around for ages. Um, <laughs> in that I. I I can't remember when I heard about it, but it was a long time ago. Um, oh, for the life of me, I can't remember where it came about. I must have, maybe it probably saw it on another YouTube video years ago or something. Um, I'll admit, I forgot about it yeah. until, you know what made me realize it? Um, there's a card. Sorry, Lauren. I, I, yeah, we need a professional to uh, to sort us out here. But that crack, all of a sudden, cutting like that was totally fluke. Okay, so back to what you were saying. You were talking about how you put your videos together. I think. All oh, right. Um, I think now I was talking about. Oh gosh! Now you're asking me to remember what we spoke about. Um, I think we were talking about the Illuminati card game. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. And then I was saying that 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 specific video was based off where I didn't necessarily want to sound like I was targeting our government, so I just used a lot of instances in history to prove my point. Okay, I can hear. Are your pods can you hear us? There we go. Yeah, I can uh, hear you now. Okay. okay. Um, what what we were talking about when we were off when we were offline, um, as I said to to Lauren, I said, how many like as as most of those cards would did they come out before the actual events? Because that's what I find very really interesting is that if the cards came out before the actual events, then it's even more creepy. Mm. But it, but majority of them, for the, you, you're putting me now to try and remember because it was quite a while ago. I know it was a while ago that I did that video. So I'm due yeah, one. Like but, um, from my knowledge, majority of the stuff happened after the fact because a lot of it happened in our lifetime. And most of us, well, in my lifetime at least, um, 
and I think for me to remember some of those instances would mean that it was after the cards were released. Okay. That's so scary. That's like to that's to me is like really, really freaky. Because it's like how do they, they know? Want, but that's yeah. what they want. They want us to be afraid. They want us to feed off our fear and our paranoia. But you know, one of the the biggest um things for, for the Freemasons and the Illuminati is to do things in plain sight. So they get a big rush from what I've heard, this is my opinion, they get a big rush of, of telling you something and you're not taking, because you're so busy living your life, you're not taking notes. And then they can turn and say, but we did warn you. We did tell you um, it's not our fault you weren't prepared. Um, that type of um, treatment of, of things that have happened. So I see it as that they've warned us and we didn't take notes, so the cards have played out, and we only now realize it. But do you think it was a matter of warning us and then the cards played out, or do you think it was a matter of warning us and then making it happen? Oh yeah, no, I think it. I think, I think everything for the last one hundred years, any great event in history, or even subtle events that maybe didn't impact us at the time, but slowly shook the world somehow. Um, what I call the butterfly effect. I think that anything that has any butterfly effect on the world is pre-planned. Most things are pre-planned. Or um yeah, like I saw I saw who who I watched a video yesterday on YouTube where somebody was set, was showing um a section of I don't really necessarily want to talk government stuff, but it was the ANC's initial um, um, 1993 mm -hmm. um, release statement of where the mm -hmm. party is going and what the party has achieved and everything like that. And the things that they say in there, and if you go read it now, they were telling us this was going to happen. That where we're sitting in the last 10 to 15 years is was their plan all along. So a lot mm -hmm. of these corporations come to, they, plan, they, they plan it way ahead of time because they need to put it in motion so that nobody otherwise they're they're seen as a terrorist group um so they've got to do it in a slow subtle way so yeah that's my slowly opinion. boiling the frog mm. i was just about to say that i was just yeah. about to say that point well done Fools never but differ <laughs> <laughs> and um, you look yeah. But some, who is it? Uh, somebody keeps saying, you know, that they haven't been lying to us. They've been telling us to our faces that, that they're going to be doing this. But it's almost like we just don't listen. We're like, oh, yeah, whatever. But meanwhile, they're telling us to our faces, this is what we're going to do. And it's like, just nobody takes, pays attention. It's but weird. nobody believes it. It's like, how often have you heard not to take a threat from somebody who tells you to your face? that they're going to harm you because the, the person won't tell you that if they're really going to harm you. But actually, is that not what, is that not what happens in general? Uh, we get told this is going to happen and then a year, it's maybe not immediate, it's a few years down the line and then it happens. Um, a, a threat is a threat, whether it's said to your face or whether, I don't know, I, just, I have strong opinions on the topic <laughs> but it's not really my plan no no so. it's it's good to you it's good to know what you believe it's very good to know what you believe i think that's what lockdowns taught me and um, it's made me grow and realize um who i am and what i believe but i i want to hear about your top or what's your most fascinating or strange or things that you just sort of looked at and went that that doesn't sound right to me so like being a conspiracy theory Lauren, can you hear us? Yes, sorry, Mo. I'm going to go back. Can, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, we are. Yes. We are. We are. I can hear you. <laughs> Maybe the earpods on. Are we streaming though? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, because mine just died. So I don't know if it was oh. an internet thing. 
Oh, it could have been, yeah. Okay, so, um, okay, sorry, it was just my sag. Um, so my top, my top three conspiracies mm. would definitely be anything secret society. Um, I don't necessarily know everything about it. There's so mm. much to know. Um, mm. It's also too much information, and sometimes your brain can't process or hold everything. So I sort of replace the ideas that make more sense to me in the time with I remove the old ones that maybe just became stupid along the way. Secret mm -hmm. societies are a major thing for me. I love anything. I find it fascinating. Not so much conspiracy-like, but fascinating in general that these type of things do exist and that there are grown people that buy into this. It's I find it fascinating. So, um, definitely secret societies. JFK's assassination is my all-time favorite conspiracy, purely because I'm a major Kennedy's fan. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I have a Boston called Kennedy, because I'm a major Kennedy fan. So, mm -hmm. JFK's assassination is is definitely and then like I said my set my video that I'm working on is the 27 club which I also find fascinating and not just 27 club I find very I find it very fascinating when a celeb or a famous person dies of weird unknown circumstances mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, yeah when it's not their time or the coroner can't find something specifically yeah. wrong I find it very I definitely think there's a conspiracy yeah. there so, so that's it. So you like, yeah, you, you've mentioned two that sort of lead into two of my one of so JFK links me to obviously Marilyn Monroe. Yes. Okay. Her death. Um another more recent one would be the Brittany Murphy one. Oh um, yes. Yeah. Um where she was at her prime and then all of a sudden some strange her husband didn't want her body um, they didn't. He didn't want them to do an autopsy, um, and then so this young, healthy girl died of pneumonia or something. Um, yeah, just very, very freaky. Didn't her husband know. also die not long after that? I don't know. I, I actually so. don't know. And Laura and yours? What about Whitney Houston? Oh God! Don't talk about my queen like that. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> because that's, nobody actually knows how she died. Yeah. The uh, last what, they knew she was climbing in her bath. That was the last that they knew, and they found her dead in the bath. I mean, that to me, like that's. And I was actually funny enough thinking about it just the other night. I was thinking, you know, that's kind of because I was climbing in the bath and I couldn't really feel how hot the water was because I was just so cold. And I was it actually brought me to thinking about Whitney Houston. And I, to me, that is really something's dodgy is going on there. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Look, Whitney Houston is very sad. Ronaldo, I remember Ronaldo woke me up in the middle of the night to tell me that she had passed away. So, yeah, yeah, she was awesome. She yeah. was. We all grew up listening to her. I mean, I mean, I remember seeing. Remember between shows, they put on her her greatest hits or one of her the greatest love of all, and. Um, you know, the whole, yeah, it was, I mean, I think I, I got Bodyguard, the soundtrack. I watched that movie about 50 times. <laughs> oh, no, I love that movie. Every woman, it's on every <laughs> Sing it, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and and gen Gentle Inflatable says, and the Diana thing. Yes. Oh, yes. And yes. Princess Diana. I mean, that to yeah, me is a major. But it is there. That's just, oh, that, there's just too much freaky shit going on there. I think I, that was instigated by the queen. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, not not the queen, what's her husband? Dirty uh, Fayette. No, oh, the queen's husband. Uh, oh, the queen's husband. Yes, I Prince Philip. Well, you've heard, the, you've heard the conspiracy story there about the royal family, right? Yes. So the Which ultimate... One? Now, which one? There's which a one. So the one where we can think of the movie. I don't want to say too much in case something happens to me. But you know <laughs> where our favorite movie in the 1980s was V, right? And those set of people, if you're following me. 
shape-shifting people. Oh, oh, you mean the reptilians? Oh, yeah. Good. Okay, you say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and someone said to me recently, um, they believe Megan's seen the real and how that's why she's pulled away from it. And I was just like, okay. Oh, uh, I actually haven't thought of it from that perspective, but you're probably right. Yeah. So apparently, um, if I die mysteriously in the next year, <laughs> but it's yeah, <laughs> first. <laughs> like some strange virus. I've got you, girl. I've got you, girl. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> And also, you find out, and speaking about the royal family as well, Jack the Ripper. Mm-hmm. Yes. Jack the Ripper, the fact that he was said to be the Queen's physician, Victoria's physician. Was it Victoria or was it the, was it the one before? I think it was Queen Victoria. They actually, they, they, there was this whole conspiracy that Jack the Ripper wasn't some normal psychopath, that because he was so skilled... There's that movie with Johnny Depp, and um, one of the theories is that he's actually the Queen's physician, and that they were all trying to hide that Prince Albert had some abnormality, and um, I just thought that it was fascinating. Oh, I haven't actually heard that one. I've never yeah, heard that write one. Yeah, write it down. Write it down. Yeah. What's the movie? Um, um, I'm going to Google it now. Um a second. Um, I had the post even. I can't remember the name. Yeah, it sucks getting old. My mark is. Wally Stabier says Dinah's death was the, was the beginning of the commies getting out of the closet. Think so? What's what the commies? Ladies? The communism. Oh. Communists. Maybe. Mal, Mal S says you girls rock. Wouldn't miss this for anything. Oh, okay, cool. Well, then subscribe. <laughs> and we'll have Lauren on again. And subscribe to Lauren's channel. <laughs> yes. Girls, you might get a video this year. Yay. Yeah, I love your videos. I love your yeah, videos. You. You've got to give us another one, Lauren. You have to. No, I must. I must make time. No pressure. It. Hey, Lauren, no pressure now. Come now. <laughs> um, I can't help, but I love them. <laughs> oh, thank you. So that movie, that movie with Jack the Ripper and this whole theory was um, from hell. And what makes it so nice is that it's got Johnny Depp in it. But if you watch the movie, it all sort of comes out. But it's, and it's even in the movie, um, of course, as usual, all the Jews get blamed. (laughs) And initially they say, oh, it's the Jews that they're killing everybody. Um, And then he discovered, but watch the movie. Watch the movie. What's Jack it called? Ripper. From hell. From hell. From hell. 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 From hell. Wait, I gotta write this down. Hold on. I'm getting. I'm getting my, my pen and my paper. I've seen it. it I've, I think I still have the DVD. It's one of my all-time favorites. And it and it delves also into like coins, like the more like back in. Did you know? So I watched Pinky Blinders. Pinky mm-hmm. Blinders. Did you know that cocaine in the turn of the what's it 19th century 20th century i always get it confused um that was readily available freud prescribed it i thought it was only something they did here in the 1970s it's been around for decades wasn't it a medicine it's one yes place. and then they and discovered they said, that that it's all its bad properties and all of that yes things. it was in the original yeah. recipe of coca-cola hello yeah but I think it was actually a medicine at one stage as well, wasn't it? It was like a drug that well, you would take. It was prescribed some as a medicine. Yeah. It wasn't, yeah. yeah, there was huge issues. Wow. It's actually scary. So it makes you wonder then if, 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 if cocaine was, was medicinal and now they've, they've discovered how bad it is for you. So what, did, what would they think about then weed? Because, I mean, weed is the same thing, sort of. It's also like medicinal, but nobody actually knows what the bad or ill effects of it are. No, the long-term effects. Well, look, yeah, I the think long-term effects, yeah. 
Yeah, I think if you smoke it, I'm a bit of an activist. Like, oh, so, like, okay, look at Julian Stubbs, this activist. Why did they steal the stuff and then go back and kill him? There is another conspiracy theory for you. Did someone want him silenced? Was the economic empowerment of bringing marijuana to the people? I mean, think about it. What can South Africa export at mass production? Yes. Marijuana. Marijuana to the world. We'd become the, we would create jobs beyond, wealth beyond. Yeah. And all mm. of a sudden, boom. One of its inspirational leaders, dead. You know, crazy. I mean, I could go on and on and on about this, but I find it fascinating, you know. I just um, want to remind everybody, guys, um, all the contact details for Lauren Gass for her um, graphic post. design is in the description below. Um, please don't, if, if if you're close to her or you know somebody who knows her, then give her a shout because she she doesn't do strangers. <laughs> or she doesn't, uh, wait, that I comes up. Doesn't on. Do, no, she only does Ronaldo. <laughs> Oh my god. Sorry. Taken a, a, a weird turn. She doesn't take on new clients that are strangers. And this okay, is for graphic design. It's people, please. Yes, that, that's for the graphic design. Okay. Nothing else. So y'all give her a shout to her. But also okay. don't forget to subscribe to her channel. She's got two amazing videos about conspiracy theories. Um so go find her channel, it's called Lauren Gauss. Um Close. Close. Oh, I can never get it right. And every time I think I'm saying it right, I'm, I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Lauren. It's fine. It's fine. You know, this is a problem when you're brought up by an extremely English mother who calls Vernigan Vernigan. You like, mean for Yeah, you know, for, <laughs> for Innigen. Now, you see, I, my Afrikaans is delicious. I'm sorry. No, it's like, fine. Your Afrikaans is great. At least you try. That's delicious, sexy. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah. So please don't don't forget to go and check it out and go and like and subscribe as well. Her, yeah. her videos are awesome. Yes, I, I tell you, this tea's looking a bit as where I say par. But actually, after that whole like lights out and down and scramble to find out, get the DB board, get the torch, find out <laughs> what the heck's going on. I'm doing this. Actually, I'm actually doing this. <laughs> Sounds like you need a glass of wine, not a cup of tea. No, a whiskey yeah. would be a good idea. <laughs> Sorry, Lauren, what's your drink of choice? What do you like drinking? Um, wine. Yes, wine. white or red? Red, red only. I, I can't mm -hmm. do white. Okay. Only red. Oh, you like me. A okay, Merlot, gonna... Shiraz. Sorry. Sorry I got a serious. No worries. I, I got a serious headache from from white one. I can't drink white one. I find white wine makes me actually very ill the next day. Very ill. Um, whereas red wine can be heavy, but not as ill. It doesn't make me as ill um, as yeah. white does. No, I'm the same. And, and red, I don't even get a hangover. I, can, I don't get a hangover if the red um, is, a, is a newer... I, I don't like anything that's older than two years. Mm, okay. I find the tannins are too heavy for me. I used to be able to years ago when I started enjoying red wine. I could drink any red wine. It was not yeah. a thing. And then all of a sudden one day I realized I couldn't anymore. So I have to now check the year when I buy wine. Um, okay. You can only buy a year three years. My requirement is it has to be older than two. two or oh, older. is it? I prefer uh, that way. It's, it, I prefer that smoother taste okay. rather than that um, tang in your mouth. If that makes Look, I love the taste of an older red, but my body doesn't like it. Um, yeah. I can drink one, like you know, because you don't fill a whole glass of red. So I would drink a half a glass, and I can feel it. It, it's, mm -hmm. it makes me feel um, heavy. In the, so when I do younger, I feel like I can have, a, I can stretch it out further. So, yeah. I'll look into that. So you say, sorry, Laura. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask, but isn't it the longer it, it ferments, the more alcoholic it becomes, or am I wrong? Yes, with the tannins and stuff, it just becomes yeah. heavier. I don't know, so it gives I, me incredible sinus if it's got a I lot really, of tannins in. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think back because I did five-star wine training like when I was 
like 23, which was a very long time ago, and I'm trying to remember from back then. Like, okay, you look 24, so it's all good. <laughs> oh, thank oh, Lord, you. Yeah. <laughs> we all look. Uh, I'm, I'm the, your, your, your husband and I were born in the same year. Okay, he's, you're, you're he's younger like, than me. Yeah, he, he's 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 three months older than me, or two months. Okay. Because I'm in yeah. June. I was last month. Okay. Well, I'm a seventies baby. So yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> That's awesome though. Yes. But I, I, like I never would have thought baby. thought that you were that age. I never would have said it. I thought I would I would have put you more around about my age. Who me? Yes. Thank you. So I'm twenty four. Yeah, Excellent. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, also, I wish I, I was 24. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Lauren. No, I was going to say I would never put Ruth at a 70s baby. Mm. No, definitely mm. not. Thank you. Thank you. You, you don't you even made... have as many wrinkles as I do. Yeah, no, the, my mother actually looks really good for her <laughs> age. Really, really good. So I'm like, yeah, go jeans, go jeans. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I might have found one grey hair and then I just decided, okay, wait, let's just colour that hair all the way. Um, <laughs> there was something I wanted to ask you. Um, Sorry, I'm just timing out somebody here. Okay. Um, you spoke Sorry. about, okay, so obviously I'm from the Jewish background, right, in the Old Testament and the blah blah You spoke about the Moloch, right? Mm-hmm. In your video, yeah, the yes. God that they they just the piece of blood yeah. yes, and how like just think how far we've actually come, like that we don't worship these crazy gods. Where if our children are beautiful and gorgeous and quite healthy looking, that we have to now sacrifice them to these. Can you imagine, huh? Lady mm-hmm. stuff, or well, even your babies, like your dogs, your Something precious to you. You owe a debt now. Now you have to, you know, ah, yeah. Whoever says we're living through like crappy times, I think they're 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 not right. I think we're we're pretty lucky. I think we're I think we're lucky in that maybe our beliefs aren't as primal anymore or as um, far fetched. But I think the beliefs of today's society is arguably more detrimental to be honest um, yeah. I think it, it moves with the time so yes we're not sacrificing animals to to false gods anymore and stuff like that but we're sacrificing other things right now and we're yeah. selling our souls for other stuff at the moment yeah. so I think it's yeah all relevant to the times yeah. Yeah. I just I think I'm just glad I'm not dying of like a tooth abscess and I can't yeah. eat and then I starve yeah. to death. And I'm yeah. also grateful. Like, did you know a hundred years ago there was something called a debtor's jail? So if you couldn't pay your debt, you went to jail. To debtor's jail. Sure. A brilliant show you have to watch is called um um what what the heck was it called? It was with Liv Tyler. I don't know if it was on Netflix. Um, it's all about like um, hooking in the 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 brothels back in oh. also in the turn of the century, and it deals with all these interesting and fascinating things that come up. Debtors jail, how people dressed, how people washed themselves, like in the story. And it was just I find that period so fascinating. Sorry, I'm sort of off topic. But, yeah, I love having intellectual debates. I love discussing period stuff, how life's changed. Um, yeah. So, mm, I love having great conversations. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, yes, it was called Harlots. Thank Harlots. you, teacher. Harlots. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, quite awesome. I had a frog in my throat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How many people do you, Lauren, have you met anyone yet to since have had um, the dreaded um, flu that's going around at the moment? And I mean, I flu with inverted commas. I don't personally know somebody that has had it or has tested positive for it. Let me rather say that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I don't personally know someone, but I do know a person who knows a person. So yeah. directly know someone. So like um, my sister will say, oh my gosh, this girl that works with her for arguments. I'm not, it's not true, but let's yeah. just say for argument's sake. Because like, um, you know the yeah. stigma people are putting now on it, so I don't want to now, people that know my sister now think that some of her friends have it. I'm just no. saying for argument's sake that yeah. I've heard that. I've heard an instance where someone I know knows someone. So... Mm. Mm. See, I think it all relates to what you've put in your body in the last three to five years. I think if you've gone for any sort of um, immunization or whatever, I think that naturally will test for it. Because really? I think that's one of my conspiracy theories. I don't know if it's true or not. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an epidemiologist. But I think if, because I think countries that have that have got a higher rate of vaccination and stuff, I think maybe they're also, I don't know, maybe I'm talking absolute poo. But um, that's how I see it. Um, where an old age home where my mother lives, they had quite a few cases. And in the last 10 days, they've had seven deaths. But half of these, but lots of these people were, really really old and had underlying issues Conditions. yeah so i don't know that's just a conspiracy theory i'm playing with i'm not saying it's not real i just think it would you'd find it easy like easier how's my english I'd, you'd find it quicker <laughs> easier you'd find it yeah it would test like that so that's mm -hmm. actually very fascinating because, I mean, it's not far-fetched to consider that they do pump toxins into us to make us immune to all these random things that we can catch and develop. Mm. It's not it's not far-fetched. Mm. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, those who go for the um, – please, flu shot people don't come for me. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. It's the flu shot people <laughs> develop stronger symptoms of certain things um, because like they say everybody's going to get COVID. They say it eventually, naturally, it's going to come around and we're all going to get it at some point yeah. in, our, yeah. in, our t in our lives. Um, it would be interesting to know the medical history or not necessarily medical history, but like the case study vaccinations and versus non vax because I don't go for flu shots. I refuse to. Oh, I don't. And I'm not a sickly person. So mm. you don't see me having, if I have a headache, I have a headache and that's it. And I suffer from sinus. But I'm not somebody who every flu season gets the flu. I don't. So I've never felt the need to go. And, and quite frankly, I don't necessarily believe in the benefits of it. Mm. So mm. I would like yeah. to see how I would feel, like, be or be how my body would react to this type of thing versus somebody who maybe religiously goes every year. Yeah, it's actually quite fascinating to see. Yes, yeah. you know what gets to me is, is I mean viruses don't stay the same; they mutate, they change. So how do they know that the flu vaccine that they're giving you this year is for the flu that's going to come out this year? That's what I find strange. How do they know that that specific flu is going to come out? That that mutation of the flu is going to be coming out this year, and don't because they, it's not the same flu that was out last year. Don't they inject you with last year's flu? That's what. I, but I'm actually thinking. So what they do is they start advertising these flu vaccines. Okay. So everybody piles off into the chemists and pharmacies and stuff to get the flu vaccines which then a lot of the flu vaccine makes a lot of them sick and that now makes the flu virus that's going around now this winter. Mm -hmm. So let's think about it for a second. How do we know that this actually isn't a ploy to get more people going to see doctors, pharmacists and that sort of thing and get more medication? How do we okay. know that? Mm -hmm. You mean like Big Pharma? Like what do they call it? Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. like Big Pharma's ploy to get all of us to get everybody sick. And also, if you stress about something, you're more likely to to become sick because you're breaking yeah. down your immune system from the stress. Mm. So when they had us level five, I mean how many I'm not even I'm not even an anxious person in general. I get anxious when I'm driving and there's too much traffic, but I'm not a I don't wake up with anxiety and stuff. I've never been 
being that kind of person. But I found myself in level five, waking up some mornings and feeling like I don't know what's in the like I don't know. Not okay. Yeah. Not okay. That's that's mm. the right phrase. Mm. And mm. surely that does has an, a negative effect on my body because that's of not course. how I usually react to things. Of course, so, stress yeah. stress is the biggest killer. I mean, they all say that, okay. but yeah. Stress is the absolute biggest killer. We, 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 you know, we being like typical women, we're not reading any of the comments. <laughs> Laura? <laughs> um, but I see Christian Bunzaya said, also heard something about the Black Death making a comeback crazy times indeed. What is, isn't the Black Death a bubonic plague? Yes. yes. Well, careful, you said the B word, the other B word. Um, you're not like, instead of the opposite of white. Oh, well, I'm reading a comment, so... <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> no, it's, like saying, it's, it's, it's like saying white bread. I mean, how do you say it any other way? No, you're not allowed to say, you're supposed to say nice cream bread or off-coloured beige. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, laugh, please. That's <laughs> funny, I know. <laughs> okay. Elizabeth, I just, I just draw to that kind of like... Offense. Yeah, no. yeah, hysteria. Like, I'm um, also like over it. People are yes, far too sensitive over stupid shit. But anyway, uh, Elizabeth says flu shots protect against three or four strains of flu virus. They can't predict how bad the strain of flu is for that specific year. Well, that's the thing. Like I said, the flu changes all the time. It's the same as now the coronavirus that's going back in the place where it started. I'm not going to say the name of the country. Mm -hmm. The place where it started, mm -hmm. it's gone back there. They're having their second wind of it now. But the virus isn't the same. It's mutated. It's changed slightly. So that's really? it. Even if they do, yes, even if they do make a vaccine now for, for this virus that's going around currently, it can still, this virus can still come back as a different strain. Mm -hmm. I just I don't mean, want even, even, no, but it, but even the Spanish flu came back as a different strain. It did come back, but it came back as a mutated, a different, weaker strain. But nobody knows which strain that, that sort of virus is going to go. You don't know if it's going to become weaker or if it's going to become stronger. So, I'm so, but, yeah. But it's I mean, if I was watching the video today, I was watching a video today about the Spanish flu. And this virus is very, very, very similar to the Spanish flu. Ooh, in Very terms of wait, 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 in mortality rate, or are you talking? No, with... I'm not talking about mortality rate. I'm talking about symptoms. Okay, fine. And it affects the lungs and that sort of thing. <coughs> it's the same sort of symptoms that from the Spanish flu as to what we're getting now with with this virus. Mm. Mm. But just random. My mother-in-law actually mentioned it the other day. What? How? 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 I don't want to because I don't want to compare the two, but both are serious. How different is this considered? I don't want to say this the wrong way and offend someone, but how is this different to TB? Mm -hmm. TB is also considered con contagious. Um, South Africa has a large number of TB, TB, TB cases, um, mm -hmm. and we've made it. Like we we strong. That's the thing. It's, it's people don't realize we we herd immunity can work very well, but also our our bodies adapt, our bodies adjust. Um, but, I mean, if you look at back, I mean, if if every virus was a deadly virus that killed off millions and millions of people and didn't stop or didn't go away or didn't get weaker, then we wouldn't even be alive today because we would be no longer human. Exactly. So I think uh, letting our bodies fight off viruses and that sort of thing is far better for us than all these vaccines and all these tablets and antibiotics mm -hmm. and everything else. Because it's all the tablets and antibiotics that's making our systems weaker. Mm -hmm. It's actually bringing us down. Mm -hmm. so, our con so the conspiracy now, number 10, I don't know how many we've gone through. <laughs> oh, a few um, now. We... Lauren, let me ask you this. Where do you think it was? Was it made in a lab or did it come from, from, from a wet market? 
where do you think? If you, if just off the top of your head. Okay, I think it was made in a lab, but released in the wet market. Okay. May I kill two birds with one stone? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Covers all her bases. I hope we can do this again. I hope we can, yeah. we should actually um, discuss like topics like we do uh, it's a particular type of um, theory or someone's death or some murder. Yeah, we were going to talk South African murder mystery, but maybe right, we should. Right. Yes, we're going to talk South African true crime. Yes. Yeah. yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Do you want to talk about that now? Well, when yeah, okay, yeah, well. your timing, what's your. We're going on. Either, close, either uh, that or we can do a part two that, that we call True Crime with Lauren House. 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 Oh. <laughs> I said it right, I said close, close. Yes, you did. Okay. Yeah, well, look, we can. So we can, we can, I would love for there to be like a book club of it, whereas you're not, you're not reading books, but you're reading up on a different case and then you're discussing it with each other. Okay, okay. I love that. Okay. So maybe you know if anybody's yes. that, but I'm cool Yes, with that. you could put something on your also on your website, oh. like your podcast, something you found interesting, put it on as extra material for people to delve into and then you can either have a show or invite us or we can have you or yeah, yeah. we can yeah, yeah. Or we, or we yeah. can do a, we can do a once a month book club or something with a yes. of us. True sure. crime, something or the other, we call it like that. Yes. Where we can talk about all sorts of crime and conspiracies and yeah. because you know South Africa's serial killers are actually very fascinating. Um, in that a lot of the time there is because you know that that nature versus nurture argument. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like obviously they are in, in most countries in the world they've got serial killers, but a lot of the time you can't pinpoint them. Because it's very, it's very different, vastly different. But in South Africa, there seems to be a little bit of a pattern in the nature versus nurture. And what is that saying? Um, if a village raises a child, I oh, can't yes. remember it. But whatever yes, yes. That, that thing is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it plays true in South African serial killers, to be honest. Um, I'm not talking about um, Daisy DeMolka and that, those kind of people that are just psycho. I'm talking about people who are normal guys <laughs> that go out and live normal lives, everyday lives, but then have this hidden... Um, hidden agenda, hidden, hidden life. Yeah. Hidden life where they're actually killing and murdering um, innocent children and so forth. It's, it's very fascinating. I, 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 try, I tend to always navigate towards what this, the psycho is thinking. Okay. <laughs> how it works. I've um, been, okay, Mr. Germ Warfare is with us tonight. Lauren, I don't know if you uh, watch him. He's, oh, yes. He talks about all what you've just been saying. And he says, I'm giving you guys such great one-liners and you're totally friend-zoning me. Sorry. Oh, you said something earlier that Sorry, was quite Okay, see if we can find it. The Indian flu, however, offers you a good deal before infecting you. Oh, huh? <laughs> really, Jim? Oh, my God. Yeah, and the other people that we can't say their name don't give you any deal whatsoever. Have you guys you, ever watched? Mm, then, sorry, then, he says, then he says, this, this, flat, this Spanish flu came back Portuguese and opened a successful fish and chip shop on the corner. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so dry. <laughs> Jim is the best at dry, corny jokes. He's the best at it. Best. <laughs> <laughs> You've missed a few countries there, Jim. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Yeah, keep them coming. <laughs> but yeah, no, that would definitely be fascinating. Like, I mean, during lockdown the first week, I think TG Guy and I, I said, what well, used to be on E, those criminal mystery stories. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I, oh, remember Murder She Wrote? Yeah. Like, yes. always used to figure it out who done it. Yeah, always, and even even with the stories that come out today, I'm like, mm, I scheme it's that oak. And TG guy goes, how the hell did you know that? And I just, I just scheme like, 
you can see it. Oh, when, when, when I was growing up, I actually wanted to do crime investigation. That's what I wanted to go into oh, really? when I grew up. Yeah. I'm glad I did. Like it, forensics. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. When I was a teenager, I wanted to go into forensics when I grew up. That's yeah, so so exactly. So I was hired by the SAPS in my twenties, straight out of school, to be a forensic lab assistant. But I never took it. I could have had a job in Cape Town now. But I thank God I didn't. You know, sometimes in life I sort of feel that we have these big angels. We at the time when you look at it and you're so disappointed and you wanted it so bad and you don't understand why it never happened, trust me, there's a reason. It is, is. and if it if it's not bothering you five years down the line, then, like you know what 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 is that thing? Um, just to use a normal everyday analogy, mm -hmm. if you go to the shop and you see something that you really want, and in that moment you're like, I really really want it, but I don't know if I should buy it because maybe it's pricey or whatever, and you go home and if you by tomorrow you've forgotten about it then it was never something that you actually wanted. So it's meant to be. Usually in five years' time, whatever you wanted five years ago is not important anymore because you, you, you've you found a different path or life has turned out totally different for you and it's actually awesome. Yes. It's, awesome. It's, it's actually yes. intuition, is it not? Correct. Remember what I, said, what I said to you in our first email? How is that for intuition? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you see? I remember you said it, yes. Ruth, yeah. Ruth, Ruth, Jim is ripping my accent off again. <laughs> Stop it, Jim. Stop it. <laughs> Crime investigation. <laughs> oh, gosh. He says I say luck finally. Luck. Luck. What's wrong with luck? <laughs> no, I don't get it. I can't get it out of my head. I'm sorry, I don't know how I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Shall we talk the Queen's English, darling? Do no. you do any accents? Do you do any accents? Me? No. <laughs> no. No, you you neither do I, don't infection. worry. <laughs> no, it's really lovely having you on. I don't know. We can carry on talking about whatever. But tell us so who was the biggest um, South African like serial killer that you read about that sort of missed mainstream media or didn't meet, miss mainstream media? I think majority of them probably did. We were either not the audience at the time because a lot right. of this, the serial killers that I'm hearing of, either something happened that directly affected us so that so this murder didn't affect us. So we weren't paying attention. More often than not, that's what's happening anywhere. I mean, you'll probably find right now something's happening that sort of has serial killer tendencies or vibes, mm -hmm. but we're not paying attention because everyone is COVID blind at the moment. Before. Um, Before. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let me just run through. Um, I don't think anybody's paying attention to what's actually going on around. What's there. actually like there was like the, that that pregnant lady that was murdered i mean i know that was a farm murder but my point is why are we not walking and protesting and and up why in are arms. we not doing that yes why, why are we not doing that that's like what more and i mean i know farm murders happen all the time but my point is at what when do we now draw the line to say yeah. now we're going to be picketing and we're going to be um, creating like a massive thing about it because what is more as a woman what is more what touches us more than a pregnant woman mm, like it's true do you know what i mean and a child that that's mm. that touches us far more than anything i mean a child could have actually been saved it was and, twins as far as i remember oh my god if i if i read so it was twins. sadistic it's just so who is i think it was actually germ talking about um on your show this morning that criminals should have no rights they should no. be forced into hard labor and we should test all our crap on them and they should become the guinea pigs and the low lives and have no rights none it's like, it's like when when the president spoke and he said that 
uh, um, if I remember correctly, it was he that said um, that, that for gender-based violence, they're, they're going to up the sentence and they're not going to bring back the death penalty because they feel like the criminal should live out their long life or their long sentence or whatnot. That's absolute bullshit because everybody knows, even me, if I had to go to prison tomorrow, I'll probably be out in five years. Yeah, yeah, or you'd be eating KFC and enjoying the Wi-Fi and it doesn't and make getting... you it doesn't make you scared anymore. It's, no. it, there's no fear for it. So um, obviously, I wouldn't like it because that would mean that I don't have my things around me. But l let's be honest: somebody who has actually got very little to live for in general mm -hmm. is going to care, isn't going to give two shits if they're going to go and sit in a cell or somewhere. Yeah, I mean. But what's stopping a homeless person from going and, and committing a crime? Because they just think, okay, well, if I go to jail, I'm getting free food, I'm getting a roof over my head, I'm getting everything that I need. So exactly. it's far better than living on the street. So Jinx, you owe me a Coke. It was just what I was going to say. No, no, it's just the way I think we're thinking at the moment. You know, there's no responsibility. There's no accountability. I mean, I, I th someone was talking about the hawks, or I saw something about the hawks. I would love to know how serious do people actually take the hawks? We all think, oh, the hawks, you know, oh, Zupta, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the scorpions were, why were the scorpions disbanded? I don't even know. I mean, I I'm a bit, either. I haven't read. Wasn't it, wasn't it, I don't know, I just talk about what I hear of from mm -hmm. eavesdropping. Um, yeah. wasn't it because didn't Zuma do it? Didn't he? Wasn't it because he obviously knew that they were going to come for him? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that I don't I think, remember. I could totally be lying. Look, I I could totally be lying. I don't know, but that's I what think, I vaguely remember. So I think I'm going to do some research and find out about that because I think what a waste, what an absolute waste. Like they were actually really doing well. In fact, one of, so I talk about becoming a criminal. I mean, the fact that I got hired by the SAPS to become a, um, a criminal um, lab assistant in a thing was totally by fluke, complete fluke. But they hired me and then there was obviously coming from Gateng to Cape Town. I was just out of school. Um, there was no infrastructure in Cape Town at the time for me, but and then I thought to myself, some years later, I thought, wow, I'd actually like to go and work for the, uh, what's it, the NIA, the National, what's it, the um, the National, what's it called? Secret Intelligence Agency. Do we have one? Apparently, we actually do. do I don't know in what thribs no. and thribs. They're not very are good at uncovering secrets, let me tell you. No. That. No, not at all. No. <laughs> and I've, and I've just, actually... Mm? But I, I, was, I just want to say, like, you know, South Africa's been, well, South Africa's had the highest amount of GBV cases in the entire, well, no, we're the top five, aren't we? Are we, are we, or are we the highest? I'm trying to remember. I don't know the stats. But, I mean, we haven't just been that now all of a sudden during lockdown. So why, why is the government all of a sudden now making a big thing about it? That, that's what, what are they trying to take our minds off of, or what what we're seeing or hearing off of? I'll that they all of a sudden now interested in GBV when mm. we've been one of the, the highest countries in the world that have with GBV cases. Mm. And it's, and I say that's it's not only since February March. It's been like for for many years. Like haven't the the GBV um, movement been marching every August? For something like for whatever yeah. they march for someone that's mm. that's just you know like the name those boards and they say the name of the victim um, mm. yeah. on it. I mean that's been happening for years. Why are we only this year when we've actually like the movements have developed themselves? That they, they, there's already organisations that are sort of taking control of where they can to help and to protect the the woman where they can. Um, yeah. I mean, last year, last year in the in Ronaldo's ward, we did an article came out in the newspaper that said that the the police stations had no rape kits, none, no rape kits, no, no rape kits, no um, sort of safety 
safety safety stuff so so they didn't even have washcloths they didn't have yeah. anything so if you were a victim and you walked in there and you said i'm a victim you just sat there until something could happen and someone could take you somewhere to to get a kit and to be cleaned up and so forth so we ran a campaign and we took it and they walked us through and this is just one little police station in his ward it's i mean it's a big yeah. police station, but it's one community it's one area mm. Mm. It's not even in the worst affected area yeah. when it comes to these type of statistics. Mm. So they were so grateful. You know, the, the, the lady, Shame, she actually passed away recently, like last week mm. or the week before. This specific, specific woman, she, she see, she genuinely was there for the right reasons. And she said, you know, um, we have nothing to offer. Even for the children, the kids come there and there's, there's nothing for them to, ta- to try and take their mind off what just happened so, to them. Yeah. And, and maybe this, no no one's cared about it. No one All gives us stuff. No one cares. And yet these big wigs drive around and how do they sleep at night? How do you actually sleep at night? It bothers me. It bothers yeah. me and I can only vote and pay tax. But um you know people say don't pay tax, let's do a tax revolt. I'm so close to thinking, yes, let's do it. Because I'm so hurtful of the, the, these arseholes stealing this money. You know, I'm not putting I mean, it where it belongs. Renting, you'll get me renting, Nana. You know, maybe, I mean, you have the Harley Davidson clubs and the bikers clubs who do the teddy bear run. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's awesome. I think mm-hmm. more women, you've got an old purse, put a few pads in. Put a few cosmetics or deodorant, maybe decide once every three months you're going to make up a care package and drop it off. There are places. I just, I, you know, um, but anyway, I mean, I'm going to rent again. I, I, I personally know a lady who goes and picks up dustbin babies. She gets a calls from the police to go pick up babies from the dustbin. Yeah. I mean, it is terrible. Can no, you no, imagine that's heavy. Thing? Yeah, Laura gets very heavy. <laughs> it's, Sorry. it's but it but it's the truth. And this is the this is the, the crazy thing is that you know, we have to change society. I mean we have to also monitor what we watch, what we see. There's so much rubbish. I mean, I haven't watched mainstream TV at all. Um since before lockdown. And I think to myself, maybe it's like sticking your head in the sand. But I just, I don't, I don't know. There's not enough exposure on the right things. There isn't. Why aren't the journalists doing a better job of of helping the weak? Let me say this. Yeah. I don't necessarily think. I mean, of course, there are some journalists in there that are following their own agenda or their own political beliefs or whatnot. But a lot of the time, it's the editors that are killing the stories. The journalists are going out and they're doing the investigation or the few times I've heard stories. They're going out and they're looking and they're looking into it and they're doing their research and their homework and then the editor cuts it down. And so we blame, I know, and I know editors are also journalists, but they've got that hierarchy that they've got to follow. So I get it, but the journalists that I know are actually they don't they're not scared to to say it has how it is, but they get shut down a lot. Um because it won't sell newspapers or exactly maybe how. there should be sorry Lauren. No, I was gonna say the, the ultimate money making thing, or well, not money making thing, I mean you could sell advertising space like my brain's always going towards what we can create with something, is to get all those off cut stuff that gets cut out from newspapers, the truth, the actual truth, whether it is full fact, 100% fact, or 50% fact and 50% fiction, who knows, we never know, but those stories need to be published somewhere, so that, like a WikiLeaks, but like newspaper leaks, if you can call it that, where all those things are there, and you, you, as an adult, who can, who can read and write and make your own decisions, can then decide what you want to believe, uh, instead of being told the same narrative in every single newspaper. Mm. That's my opinion. Like <laughs> that I should agree. be out there somewhere, and we should be able to make a choice. No, I think, I think that could be a brilliant strategy for anybody who's willing to put the man hours in it. Mm. Yeah, and and, and also now with the internet, 
Yes, like maybe an app. An app. You know, yes. it's like we're going. You can going read all the articles. And how to help click on there's a button how to donate how to help um make it an npo project and mm -hmm. um, yeah. there's always room for ideas there's always and i know some great people as well um um yeah i actually i want to mention i heard about it again there's a feeding scheme project here in pretoria called sunnyside app um and i'm sure actually you husband probably knows him mr um sean wilkinson he started it and he's it's taken him quite a few years but it's finally up and going and they're getting donations and some people are grateful and some people are like but where's the meat <laughs> mm. you know um i know i've sort of flung off topic here but i think there's such a need to be kind and assist and help people and even it's your neighbor you know I, i've said this we live past each other um you know we we live past the guy that we see on the street every day on our way to work or at our security complex or at the shop you know we need to there needs to be a connection then we need to go back to being neighborly but yeah um, yo um what's that your community your community um like create communities again we need to be feeding the families that live in our street that maybe are and i don't mean it in a in a, in a let's ignore everything else but it, but the more we give the more we teach other people to give and we can't yes. give to everybody so if we so, sort of start small in our community mm. and then when those people It'll get their feet again then they will help other people and, and it, it expands like that mm. um, a charity so, yeah a charity that laura said i'm gonna say it you say it what charity starts at home mm. yeah yeah so in your community kind of home not your yeah home. like it yeah look like not everybody's family but it's true though because it, most families have someone in the family that could do with a little push whether it is to help towards furthering their education or a help towards um deposit for something a car or a small you know like a small vehicle or what that is also if you if they need that little something to get them in life then you should yeah. do it i've always said that to an older we he he every now and then he gets his idea and he wants to do this and this, and this then i always say to him like let's let's stop and let's just ask our people first ask our yeah. people is there something that you that's going to improve your life um I mean, we know a lot of people that have never studied, that never went to study, that never, that have had dreams of becoming certain um, professionals in their lives and never got that chance. And I mean, so, somebody, there's, there's some people maybe that just really just needs to move out of their parents' house and into a small little bachelor flat or something and then you help them because maybe that's because you don't know what it's like at their house and maybe mm. whatever's happening at the house is what's keeping them back so they mm. might have when they have that freedom they might be able to flourish and grow in themselves so yeah charity does begin at home i'm sorry i also mm. believe that i genuinely believe that mm. not necessarily at home but like yeah, your in your community, your direct, yeah. your direct people that you that you see and speak to every day and every other day and so forth. Mm -hmm. mm. No, yeah, I agree. Ladies, yeah. I think we should. Um, we we've been on for a very very long time. I'm sure Lauren's also tired. We can mm. always do a part two. We don't have to fit everything into one stream. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> yeah, thank you so much for being with for coming on. Like, yay! <laughs> It's yeah. actually not as bad as I thought. Oh, I see. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I'm, I'm very nervous. I've, I've been on Ronaldo's live stream, but it's different because he's like my my safety net. So if mm. I don't want to say anything, then he'll fill the blanks. Um, yeah. But it's different when you're being when you're being chatted to in this respect because I have to respond. <laughs> so. But we're very yeah. easygoing, right? No, it was very nice. I, I <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed it. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. But thank you so much for joining us. We really, really That's appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. We'll yeah. definitely give you a shout out for a part two. Yeah. And then we'll chat yes, about yeah. the book club.
Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, right. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to obviously say our little rant. Um, like Go and share our stream. <laughs> if you like yeah. it, give us a like. Um, like, yeah. subscribe and share. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and um, be kind people. And, Laura, you always say. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. Cheers, people. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye.